Hello. How are you? Now. Really quick, I want us to look at gold. Um on the week. So, really quick, you're going to see how the 27 power 3 was a really good wireframe only because in five days it's not too tough to see exactly where we're really supporting or resisting from and so I talk about this a lot with um, some of you who are really really versed with dealing ranges but when you're looking at price that goes slightly outside of a dealing range yes you can actually come in and use a either lower PO3 number and pop down and try to align this to see exactly where you are expecting it uh, overall, right? Either up or down. But my whole thing is, right, regardless of the levels, we'll come back to that in a second. All right. Mind you, we talk a lot about time first, then price. And I'm highlighting all these areas because I want you guys to get really used to saying, you know what? It's not just about, you know, if I'm able to trade at the moment. Yes, you can press the button at any time. Some times are more risk off than on. And it's not just because you're in a kill zone. It's only because of the function that it's using. Therefore, by default, the kill zone becomes one of the safer places to participate from. Whether it's a london going into like right at eight o'clock right okay this is the monday so it's more a market maker sell model right here okay and you go lower now mind you asia is piled on um knowing how asia operates this is why it's important to be familiar with the session function and it's all situational. And I'm so glad that someone else was um, starting to understand this where we do talk about very often how Asia rarely survives, right? And so we talk about also London being low the day or high the day a lot of times, right? Now, you have conflicting information depending on what you're doing. So is this a London low of the day? Or is it a London low of the session? As you can clearly see it by hindsight, this was the low of the session, of course. So when you pop in like this, right? It gives you a turtle soup, New York above London and Asia, right? You also pop into a imbalance up here. All right. Oh, shit. At this point, you'd be like, oh, let me just use a new imbalance. All right. There we go. Or a new tool, rather. There we go. Solid. Now, you see the imbalance, right? Now, let's change colors just because it's not as good looking. All right. Now, mind you, watch this. This is my whole thing about narrative. So, when we're talking about, like, hey, where do I participate? What time do I try this? Or how do I verify what direction I'm really trading? I know a lot of people get confused about what day or, you know, when you see a certain function, what function is actually being run at the, the moment, right? So I say it like this to be specific, right? Let me drink some water. Oh my God. Mm hmm. Oh, much better. Much better. Probably sound better. Yeah, I sounded all like, uh, congested. There we go. Mm -hmm. But my whole point, right, was when you're looking at this London low, and you can see how it clearly makes like a low of the session, like we talked about. But the problem is, 
when you operate this fair value gap, right? We see how this is a main star of this move. Now, obviously, we want to think about that as we're coming up towards the Asia high, which is wide open, going from the London low. So if you're in this area trying to participate, yes, your main idea is going to be, hey, maybe we go back up to the fair value gap because London's wide open. We didn't really tap it that many times. And this is like a kind of a big amount, 30 minute imbalance, right? And so the lows of Asia are already taken. So is this just going to drop, 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 drop? It can. In this situation, no. And you're at the low of a go back level and you rise again. With this whole thing, right? Obviously, this is optimal trade entry in New York. So this is all manipulation to distribute down. Of course, obviously. A, M, and then D. Now, outside of that, the biggest thing is when you're operating this area, this is a London low of the session. Therefore, you buy this and you target this. And it's not confusing. People get confused here because they say, well, I was bullish all day because of the London low. But this is the thing. Break it down. One target at a time. When you get to this target here, you're done. That idea is done. You have to still figure out if it's still bullish. If this is giving you vibes or this is not, and you're like, wait, this is possibly a turtle soup, optimal trade entry. I have a high of the day already placed in on Monday. We're failing to get above to the fair value gap and this liquidity. Nowhere close to it. This is telling you, yo, this might really be bearish. <laughs> it really might be. And is it going to ignore this because you thought this was the low of the day? No. This becomes clear liquidity. There's no higher objectives here. At least not yet. So when you see all this, you see what I mean. There's no higher objective right now. Not right now. Monday or Tuesday to Wednesday needs to be high of the week or low of the week if you're bullish or bearish. Knowing this, right? Clearly, clearly your fair value gap starts reacting. You need to look at this as liquidity now. It's situational. So you're switching your mindset or switching your plan for what's next. If you bought this in London, you take profit at 8 o'clock. I tell you that all the time. Time first, then price. You come up and you say, you know what? Listen, it's 8 o'clock. I'm out of here. And at 3, be done at 8. And at 8, be done at 12.30 to 1 o'clock. To 12, 12 to like 12.30. You want to be done. That's what I'm saying. It's not just the kill zone is, is 8 to 11 that it's like, hey, I need to press the button now. You don't need to do anything. You need to find a setup before you press any buttons. I understand where certain people might see smaller objectives and can't see the bigger objective. That's on you to go out and zoom with the higher time frame and then come back down. Do it multiple times a day if you need to. Go to not just look at it, but go and check what the objective might be. So when you see something like this, if you're stuck on the one minute, five minute, three minute, you can't see this here all the way. You might need to be on the hour or 30 minutes to come down and fully see it. And this doesn't look like an imbalance till you get to the 30. So this is also time frame specific. This is going to look random unless you're using Asia as a, a, a turtle. Right? This makes a lot of sense. And then on top of that, people say, well, it also confused me because, well, I thought that this might have been bullish. We took out a major, one of the major lows. Okay. Now, I understand. Friday high or low is one of the majors, but at the same time, right? We talked about the inability to get back up to this draw of liquidity on Tuesday when we had a clear chance to run above there from that same low. So when we get back above there again, what does it do instead? These become relative equal lows. This doesn't even really attack like this does. What I'm talking about here is like a low. 
and then you have a low here okay then you also have the reason why we call them relative equals right is because when it gets close it doesn't really attack it even the bodies don't even close underneath this low it doesn't really take the liquidity all the way out it adds more to it therefore when you get this run above here into a kill zone this is where you participate this is where you look for the move you gather the bias and then you wait for an opportunity that gives you what you're looking for already it's not that you're just going for what it gives you no you come in with logic and you say you know what this makes more sense because x y and z you see it sell side because you're in a fair value gap above asia high of the monday by the time you get to eight nine and then ten o'clock 11 30 or 10 30 to 11 o'clock you are nowhere near this high this is not bullish you do not just start trying to buy 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 it's not going to fucking work just because you saw this go up already does not mean all oh, this is just a small retracement no this is just some bullshit a m upwards and then d to destroy the actual liquidity that was left over when you notice that it's 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 a sell side move, you don't buy this thing. You don't participate in any of this buying at all. That's not what we're doing here. I understand where it's like, hey, well, like, where do I like buy or sell? There's so many places where I could. No, it's really not. It's very limited. And I'm saying, if you really wanted to be a buyer, the only places to do that is really going to be this London low, bro. It's the only place. Because when you look at it this way, this is now underneath Asia into another, again, this is the first kill zone of the day that we really like. This is a time to press the button. And you have a great move from that. You have a clear target. It makes sense. Now, if you didn't get the up move, right? If you don't trade London, that's fine. If you trade New York, this is your move. This is different for you. This is what you need to be focused on in New York. Don't just look at this and say, okay, got it. Let me just assume this to be the high of the day. And you just buy 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 it's not going to fucking work understand the narrative you have other things in place that tell you that this might be a short-lived upfront this is a logical place for it to go but are we expecting it all the way here and people say well jay you tell me all the time monday's no different from asia or monday's no different from the first week of the month or a q1 90 minute cycle I get that. But the biggest thing is you can't come in here and assume that this is just going to become the low of the week when you have such a bearish profile. Now, on top of that, like I said, with the GP levels, I mean, we could come in and debate about them or whatever. But however you're looking at it, gold does not actually operate a high PO3 number uh, to gr grant you insane, insane moves. The 27 by itself, again, we talk about how when you see this slightly outside the dealing range, it's like a stop run, right? All this is just coming up to either rebound something, take liquidity, um, cause new internal range liquidity. All this is stop run. See? Slightly outside the level. And again, look at your PL3 liquidity. So... Even if you thought this was London low of the day, right from this EQ, when you start rejecting from this, uh, right above this EXT level, and I mean heavily <laughs> during the new, the New York distribution cycle, you might just want to ride the wave, bro. It's really that simple, especially when you know that price is macro bearish right now.
and it's not going to go back up till Thursday. See what I mean? Time plays the biggest role. Do not try to come in. And I understand where this makes people uncomfortable. I get this. I get it. There's so much except for like when I talk about the, the London move. It's the only buy that you need to participate in. All this other shit does not make sense. Not at all. All this even on the Monday. You don't buy any of this. I get it how it's up, 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 up. It makes you feel like it wants to retrace. It's not really like a, a, a super energetic low move. It's lethargic right after the morning move. This is the only thing you're offered that day. And that's why I say London is the first move of the day. And especially if you trade Mondays and you're not a London trader. You are very limited. The range itself is very limited. Doesn't matter if it's gold, NASDAQ, GJ, EU, GU. All these ranges on the Monday are limited. There's so much in here that you either need to scalp it if you are trading or you stay away from it. And that's a big thing. Learn when to stay out of the marketplace. People say, oh, damn, well, I shouldn't have traded this. I know. I keep saying I don't trade Mondays for a reason. What the fuck is that? And then they say, oh, well, let me just try PM. It's no better, bro. It's no better. Still want to operate like a fucking Monday. AMD. Like I said. Now, when you're looking at this, right? A, M, and then all oh, this is like a... Just disgusting price action unless you're really scalping. But again, time is the bigger player here. We talked about this day. But again, when we're looking at this right here. You play the game on time. You're not trading this at 6 o'clock. You're looking for right at 8 o'clock to 11. If you find that price gives you a popular move right at a good time, yes, you can target these lows. It's easy. Now, the problem is, like I said, Jay, I thought you said Asia never survives. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right. There we go. What happens? Same scenario. Told you before. Price is not really bullish. So that means every single time we go up, there's a reason and a time for it. So right here, only reason why we know that we can participate is because it's likely going to run till 8 o'clock in the fucking morning so that it can sell off during distribution. Clean. Right? Makes this day a lot simpler when you break it down that way. Now, notice how when you get to 8, 9, 10 o'clock, you are just nowhere up here at the time. That's how we separate that. See how up or down you are when you get to that certain time. You're watching for entries and you're seeing if you want to participate. But at the same time, the further you get from this high here into 11 o'clock, the better. And again, look at this. A lot of people are going to complain and say, well, what if I miss the move then? Then you miss the fucking move and then try again. And look at that. You don't. You really don't. You really do not. You don't miss the fucking move at all. 8 to 11 is perfectly on time. You miss zero moves, bro. And look, you even have something special that you can use perfectly right off your 5 minute. Look at that. Clean as daylight. And like I said, you already have the bias down. I'm telling you that it's sell side. So why would you actually come down here and do anything different? You know? And so, mind you, let's go to a 
current PO a three if we were to operate this area. Look at that. How simple that fucking is. Come on, bro. It's not difficult. It's not. It's not hard at all. It's really not. It's just killer, man. It's easy. And where's your power through liquidity? Here. That's how we are being selective and avoiding of certain things. We're not going to target this. We have something in place here that keeps our attention on the downside and say, you know what? This is a wall. We're not going to look past here for targeting or trading. This is the cap. And the time is good. Small little area. Small. 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 Right when you get to 8 o'clock. It's literally right when you get there. See what I'm saying? Right? 8 o'clock. Now it's that 9 o'clock. 10. All right? So you got silver bullet, so you got fair value gap, PO3 liquidity, okay? Then you come right down, and where do you tag? Tag EQ, right? Of 27. I'm telling you, man, it's just clean. And you get, you know, take your partials, right? Because it's likely to reverse, obviously, when you take a, a major target. You keep it that systematic, man. That's it. Keep it systematic. Don't just assume this shit to just drop all fucking day. That's stupid. What else do you have in target? You have one more. Do you get that right now? No. I know it gets close. I get it. I get it. Do one thing at a time. You're not just going to randomly start trying to sell, 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 sell again and lose all the money you just made. No. You're not trying to buy the shit either. Do not just randomly change fucking directions in the middle of the day. Unless you're really looking for just a scalp. I'm not looking to sell this, buy this, sell that. No. You can hear it in my voice how frustrating that is to me. Hearing other people do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go for the macro. If you need a target, go find it. I guarantee you, you go to a daily chart, you go to a four-hour chart, you find exactly what the fuck the algorithm was looking for. This is what I'm saying, right? Watch. So here. Boom, right? Now, mind you, this is the current week. Okay. Where was price aimed at? Now let's check. Obviously, it feels like you're cheating with this shit, but it's it's hilarious, right? That we have gold back levels. It tells you exactly where price wants to go. Do you actually have to be... Oh, hold up. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. There we go. Had to shift something. Right. There we go. It feels like the, the levels are like a cheat sheet because you don't have to really guess where, like... The macro targets are. So when you're saying like, yo, where is this thing going? And you could clearly see it. Where? So you want this 25, what? 2592 level. That's what it was. Or even if it wants to bounce here and go up for the Friday, that would make sense because look, where do we land into? Watch. Fair value gap, right? And we're on the four hours, so that means this might be a, a one hour fair value gap. Let's check it. Yep. Just so you can fully see it. I told you, go back levels work perfectly. Now, the first time we hopped into this level, Fair value gap was made. And the fair value gap, my fair value gap level is always blue. So this right here rebalances the fair value gap. 
completes the partition upward. Now, when you start to drown back down, that same area, like I said, gets played, right? But notice how there's a four hour time frame specific gap here. The way I'm talking about it, right? So knowing that this gap is like this, right? Oh, shit. Right there. So knowing that the gap is right there, right? We wicked right off the gap. Look how perfect we came into that four hour. Like, I mean, perfectly. Right there. And do you see why we had a massive retracement? You landed in a fucking fair value gap. Now, my whole thing is, maybe you aren't looking right there. I get that. That's uh, understandable. But what you're also going to see is that regardless of that, your levels are telling you, hey, I'm going lower. I'm going lower. I'm going lower. I'm going lower. Why buy any of these? Any of these uprun types of candles is not worth your time. It smacks back down every single time you try to fucking buy it. Only till you get to something logical like this right here making liquidity so it can take it later for news and then come up bullish on the day. Because Thursday's a reversal day. That's the only time you're enabled to do that. Really think about that. Just think. It's not confusing. It really is not. Stop worrying about just the lower time frame. Open your eyes and go to the higher time frame and then go back down. Do not automatically look to press the button just because it's 8 to 11. Find your setup first. If you don't understand what's going on in that asset or that chart, you do not press any buttons. You wait till you find something that you understand that you can trade. The narrative. That simple. If you can't explain to me from left to right, A to B, what the fuck this thing is doing, then you shouldn't be pressing a button. Does that make sense? We're going to have the same talk but with NQ in part two. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully that was insightful on when to trade and when not to. Okay.